All right, so we're really excited in this video. We just received our first ACC Elite by MDT. So we wanna do an unboxing video. This is gonna be a two part series. So we're gonna do an unboxing. We're gonna go over some of the components. We're actually gonna build the rifle, take it to the range on Friday, shoot it a little bit and give you a, an infield review as well. So in this video, we wanna talk about the ACC Elite and what actually makes it better. Why is it better than the original ACC? We're about to find out. Sensor on it, close it up again. <laughs> I guess that's supposed to be the sound of steel being rung. Yeah, well, it's it's too funny. That is funny. Ah, uh, the gunshot. The gunshot on a, on a, on a little uh, pick micro in there, probably. All right, ACC. That's pretty slick. I like that. That's funny. I heard the ding, and I was like, what was that ding? I'm looking for something that fell. Yeah, I thought you dropped something as well. That's hilarious. Well, that's one of the coolest little things I've ever seen stuck inside well, a box Well, you know we're like going to have that on our desk now, and every time that, uh, oh, yeah, every time that <laughs> we want to <laughs> make a point about funny. something, we'll fire around and hear it hit. All right, we're going to be taking that out and putting that on our desk. So let's put yeah. this away. Wait, let's hear it one more time. We might have to amplify it, though. Yep. Here we go. Wait few seconds for it to be set. Uh, <laughs> we're going to save that. All right. Let's That's hilarious. Going. Talk about putting a, a smile on your face before you've even shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's too cool. That All right. Great. So we'll keep going here. So when you order your new ACC Elite, um, I guess now everyone's going to be expecting to find that little thing in the box. That was a pretty cool little Easter egg. So with the magic of video editing, um, this is what you're going to get in the box. Looks like a rear weight, um, possibly a thumb shelf, uh, your bag rider, the new ACC Elite grip, which big beefy. Uh, definitely I like the fact that it's not um, plastic, so it's got some rubber grip to it, the ACC Elite buttstock. Now, uh, we'll talk about this, but it does feel a lot heavier. It feels like she's got some weights inserted in her. Um, this feels like an extension that we can make it a little bit longer or shorter. And then the ACC Elite chassis itself. And this is gonna address some issues that we've talked about in the past, um, but this is what she's gonna look like out of the box. So let's get the chassis itself put together and then let's talk about some of the improvements that we see with its construction. Go. 
So we started this whole segment off here just doing a, a little review here before we put the rifle together with that electronic circuit in the box that makes the uh, shot in the ring of the steel. That is just really cool. Um, me personally, it's almost worth the ignition just to, just to get one of these stocks is to have that do that when you open the box. Um, really cool Easter egg, way to go MDT. That's something really thinking outside the box. So I just want to talk a little bit about the ACC Elite. This is new, so this isn't a long-term review. This is just an overview. We're going to build this. This is a customer's, and we're actually going to take it to the range in a couple of days and do some filming with it there gingerly, uh, just to give you some initial impressions. But just to show you, we've had three or four of these on the line. This is one that we still use at the school today. This is the original MDT ACC. This has been on the line with us for several years, so just, just wanted to share it with you that we have a lot of experience with MDT and with this chassis in particular. And where I think our review is a little bit different is we have the issues of fitting it to different people all year long. So when people review stocks, it's one thing for them to touch it and they do this and that and say, well, this feels like this and this feels like that. But from our perspective, we actually have to fit these to different shooters multiple times all year long so you figure you know a hundred and some students minimal that that have different shapes of different sizes different facial features different hand sizes so so we get to look at it not from just us using it but actually fitting it to new shooters over and over and over and over and over again hundreds and hundreds of times so I want to share with you this is ours it's still on the line today um, we have a blue one coming in uh, that's for the shooting school, and then we'll probably have a follow-up coming in of the ACC Elite. So I just wanted to share the stock with you, show you the little wear and tear on This has been with us a long time. I'm going to set this one out of the way, though. So some initial impressions, and later we'll do an A-B video, a direct comparison, balancing back and forth between the two stocks themselves. But I, I thought a couple of things that I actually liked a lot right out of the gate. So this is my first initial impressions is I'm just going to go over it here first and then I'm going to point some things out on the inside. The first impression that I get a lot, and actually really like a lot, is how they did the bag rider. This is quite different from the old one. If you remember, the old one has a bag rider that's really long and sticks way out forward back here. Let me just grab a bunny here off camera. So one of the things about the bag riders that cause an issue especially with the older ones and i know that this is angled down it's not quite right but when shooters go to stick their hand in here the lower portion of the bag rider sticks way forward and is on top of their hand or hitting their hand mdt did a great job of allowing the bag rider but also allowing a spot for your hand to come in and set without and also giving you some room of the rifle to recoil and not come in and bounce off the back of your hand so they've given you this um, relief cut. To me that is a sign that somebody is actually listening to shooters. Some other things that I really like a lot about this particular chassis and why I think they they really did a great job. It's one thing when somebody releases a new product and, and they change the color and it's blue you know or you know they have a big announcement and the only thing they added was a different buttstock you know or, or a different recoil pad. But this is a really uh, from my perspective, a lot of shooters' input had to have gone into the making of this chassis because they've corrected a lot of things that cause shooters' issues when they're fitting it, when they're shooting it. And right out of the gate, my first impression here was they listened to shooters when they developed this because this is a big deal. I, I like the tool list that they did with the push button and then you can lock it. Um, for us here at the school, if you remember, the old ACC had little knobs you could turn and of course you pull those off and you set the brass screws. But over time, they do loosen, and, and that causes issues with things uh, moving around while the shooters are shooting, uh, going out of adjustment. So I do like the tool list where you just turn this little screw, and you can just push a button, and you can adjust it back. And then this sort of locks it in place, and so it can't come on loose. And then also, it's very sturdy. Same thing, uh, an adjustable length of pull. They, this is a space you can get in there for longer shooters, or you can take this out for shorter shooters. Again, a home run for people that are from four foot five to six foot five that we here at the shooting school have to fit the shooters all the time. How this worked at the shooting school is we actually have several different chassis, and we don't know all the shooters when they come in. So we're actually looking at each individual shooter and assigning out the chassis that would at least 
be in the area that would fit them properly. So for example, we get someone at six foot five, we have a couple of stocks that we know fit taller shooters really well, but not shorter shooters. Same thing with the opposite. We have somebody that's, that's four foot five, a young shooter, 15 year old, 14 year old, 13 year old. If there are stocks we just can't issue. The, the grips are too big. Um, the length of pull is too long, the reach for the trigger is too far, and so at the school one of the things is we actually have to issue out some of these stocks right out of the gate because we know that this stock fits taller shooters, we know that this stock will, will, will fit smaller shooters, we know that this stock is sort of that in-between area, you know, 5 foot 9, 6 foot 1 type thing. This really did a nice job of adjusting a couple of those issues. Now, it does come with the tactical grip, although I gotta say it's it's actually not all that big. It's big. I like the fact they put rubber on it now, so when you're holding on to it, it's not slipping all over the place. I do like the fact that they put a thumb shelf. I'm really growing on the thumb shelves. They allowed for really nice quick adjustability on the length of pull from super short to long. And then if Richard will paint up top here, Richard's doing all the camera work today. They allow for the cheek piece to really have a lot of motion forward and back. And they flattened it out a little bit. It's not just this round piece that rolls over that's real wide. That allows a shooter's face, especially for, for bigger shooters, to, to sort of nudge in here without pushing too far. So they've really given you a lot of mercy with setting the cheek piece way forward or way back so it's not sort of pigeonholed. So I like that a lot. Inside the chassis, first impressions, a couple of things they did right. So they have these little white inserts to help with the magazine insert, getting it in and out, as well as it's not sticking and dragging on the anodized aluminum. They really beefed up inside through here as far as its contact points. You can tell that the chassis itself is a lot beefier. When we get up to here, the, this is the pet peeve I had with some of the chassis. They took too much material out through the forearm. So without adding the weights that sort of lock on the bottom to stiffen up the forearm, it makes for a forearm that flexes a lot while shooting. This whole piece right here was not in the ACC. This allows forward of the receiver, so your receiver's locked back here, your barrel free floats. This allows for another bracing point, just a little forward of the receiver, to really rigid up the forearm. And then they really allowed a lot of thickness through here. And same thing with this. This is a lot thicker and a lot more beefier, like we can't squeeze the sides and where the other ones were so thin that, you know, I get it that they were traveling trying to make a really light chassis for some and then making it to be really heavy for others. But without the weights and everything in there, if you're trying to level the gun up and you're trying to roll the gun around, you can actually get that to flex a little bit. And um, that's not good when it comes to trying to really shoot well. So a couple of the things they did right out of the gate um, I really like a lot. They really beefed it up. You can tell, like I said, that they paid attention to shooters, people who actually spend time with, with rifles and taking a lot of input. This wasn't something that they just thought, hey, in six months we're going to release a new stock. What can we change up to make it look different? There was a lot of things on this chassis that is really well thought out. The other thing I would like to touch base on here real quick, if I can, is underneath you can see they have the full Urca rail. Um, again, nice nice job really letting a lot of beef down here and not making it so thin not cutting it really thin underneath you can see that they've left you some room for the picatinny rail up front which i actually like a lot and um just a super duper job in trying to make a really well thought out uh, overall chassis that i think without adding a lot of weights. So the other chassis, if you really wanted to run it, matches, and it was gonna be your tactical rifle, you were gonna add a lot of accessories right out of the gate. Uh, some of the things that came with this one, um, the way that it's set up, you could, you could build a reasonably weight rifle and still have something that you could take to a match right away without spending a lot of money on all the accessories, the weights that go in and out, um, making it super heavy. So you could buy it the way it is, put it together, and it's a very solid chassis to go out and start competing with right away. But my first impressions right out of the gate is that I think this is gonna be a home run for them, not for any reason other than, and to be clear, they do sponsor our podcast, but with the, spot, with the podcast and the, 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 with all transparency, we only allow people to actually advertise on our podcast through products we use. So we chose them first and for a reason. 
Um, good quality product, great customer service, really fast turnaround time. They've always treated us really, really well. But I'm always honest in my reviews too. So if I find things that I think that they can improve on as we keep working with the chassis, we'll do a follow-up, a long-term review on them, things that we found that, that maybe some shooters might not like or they might want to adjust or might want to fix. So right out of the gate, just want to share with you my first impressions. Really nice job. I think it's going to be a big home run for them. As with anything, I think a lot of these things are getting more expensive. But you can see that they've added things and where the expense is being added, um, how they're adding more parts and pieces to it. And then I think for me, the big thing is they paid attention to both shorter and taller shooters allowed us to fit properly and really beefy it up a little bit. So I figured I'd put Mina in the video. She, uh, she just come busted in. If you visit our shop, uh, she is our German Shepherd. She's our buddy here. Uh, she decided she wanted to be in this video, so we're going to let her part of it. Um, she's a great partner here at Wolf Precision. But we're going to take this. We're going to put it together. Uh, we have a rifle ready to go in it. This is going to go to the range, and we're going to do some video work at the range with it. Uh, we'll give you our follow-up report. There'll be a part two to this. We're going to have it to the range, and then we'll do a long-term review. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us. If you enjoy these types of videos, we'd like to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos that will be released weekly. Uh, but this is part one of the review. We'll add the uh, shooting review when we get to the range later this week, and then we'll do a long-term review on it as well. But so far, way to go MDT on your ACC Elite chassis. Thanks for joining us. See you next video.